This is going to be a brief introduction and overview of the electronic system in an 1882-1990 model Cub Cadet Super Garden Tractor. So here she is. I've taken out the original battery and put um, just a temporary one in place to show some of the operations of things without having a big, bulky, huge battery in the tray there. The engine's removed. It would normally be right here. So some things are removed, but it makes it easier for us to see what's going on. And uh, I'm in the process of going through the system and making sure that everything's functioning and finding, finding the problem areas uh, now while I have all the space to work on things and actually see stuff. We'll address in a later video some of the more in-depth problems that occur and why they occur and what I intend to do to fix them. But in this video we'll just go over each of the system components, where they're located, we'll touch on some of the basic functionality of, this, of the components in the system just so everybody has a, a good general idea of how these things are put together. So here's, here's the basic schematic. Battery down here, starter solenoid, key switch, um, brake interlock switch, PTO switch, two seat switches, reverse relay, reverse switch, the PTO clutch itself, voltage sensor, fuel sensor, indicators and hour meter, and then lighting lighting is down in here. So uh, I know a lot of people that are that get into these things get stumped by the electrical systems and they're not terribly complicated but you if you're not familiar with with diagnosing electrical systems and looking at schematics I think it's it's best to kind of start from scratch and take a look at the physical components and get an idea of why they're doing what they're doing before we get deep into the schematic. So on these engines, on these tractors, they don't need any battery voltage or current to run. They generate their own spark. And on these older tractors, they actually don't have either an electronic fuel pump or a fuel shutoff solenoid. So these engines can run without a battery hooked up, basically. Now, the battery does provide common points and connections for different parts of the circuits, but if you can crank the engine with, with a battery and get it to run, it will stay running. But that's not typically where the problems are on these tractors. The main problem that occurs on most of these tractors is that the connectors that they use are not sealed connectors. This is an inline fuse for the main run circuit here. It's not sealed at all. There's the reverse relay right here. Also, just kind of open the environment. Uh, every single connector in this is um, not really designed to prevent corrosion. And a lot of these things sit outside. This one certainly did. You can see the, all the rust on this solenoid here. So this, this particular tractor is in my experience is pretty indicative of what of the condition that most of them are in. So the basics of the system are the battery, the main ground here which actually will go from battery to engine and then engine provides ground to the frame and then there's an additional ground right here that grounds another part of the harness. Um, so coming off of the battery you have your ground and then your positive lead here, and there would be a bigger one of these if this was actually starting the engine. This would be the big main positive battery cable. It runs over to the starter solenoid. And then from that starter solenoid, you have another power wire that runs off of the main post to the fuse. And then out of the fuse on this black wire, it goes back into the harness to feed all the other circuits. You have an additional ground over here, this green wire. Um, back behind this, you have the voltage sensor. This is what turns on the light on the dash that says amp. 
Tells you when the battery voltage is getting low. It says amps, but it's actually a voltage sensor. This is the PTO reverse relay. It's a safety mechanism to prevent you from uh, running over stuff when you're in reverse and chopping it up like humans. Don't want to run over humans and chop them up. Seems pretty common sense to me, but it's something they had to implement. Uh, back behind here, I don't know if you can see that. So underneath the dash, or behind the dash, you have the PTO switch. And these wires here are part of the starting uh, interlock circuit. So the PTO switch does affect whether or not you can crank the engine. So the other connector at the bottom here is the actual control for the PTO itself. So this actually is just part of the starting interlock. So that you don't have the PTO engaged uh, when you crank the engine over. Uh, to the left of that you have the main key switch right here which has an additional ground post here to ground the magneto on the engine and kill the spark to shut the engine off. Right above that you have this tiny little micro switch. This is the reverse switch. So if you look on the other side of the dash, that switch has a little tang that gets pushed on by your reverse lever here. So that's the reverse switch, which ties into the reverse relay and the PTO switch. And then finally runs out to, I have this PTO mocked up here. So there's the main wire to the PTO right there. And this is not the correct PTO for the tractor. This is just a generic PTO I have off of the uh, K series. I have the oil pressure, uh, low pressure switch hooked up to ground so that I can show that it works. And that's the oil pressure uh, sending wire. And then uh, uh, back to this side of the dash, you have a bulkhead right here that connects all of the indicators. And there are six of them. And the hour meter. Now the hour meter, I have the ground unhooked from it so that when I'm doing some of the demonstrations here. I'm not clicking the hour meter away. That's the harness back by the firewall or the dash. That other portion of harness comes down through the frame here. Contains lighting, PTO, and then it also branches off here on the opposite side. Goes to another connector for the engine. And coming out of that connector, you have this green wire going to the oil pressure sending switch. And you have two wires here. You have a kill, which would be your white wire. This white wire out of here goes out to the magneto. That white wire, when you ground that, it'll ground the magneto and prevent spark from happening. And then you also have a connection over to the voltage regulator output. So this would be the voltage regulator plug. So this center wire here is the 12 volt out that provides the current for charging. And then the other two wires coming out of that regulator go out to the stator. So stator is removed from the engine, obviously. Magneto removed from the engine. Regulator removed from the engine. And oil pressure sending unit removed from the engine, as well as a PTO, just for demonstration. So that's engine compartment side. Let's go around, take a look at the schematic, and let me show you where we're at so far. So we've looked at the battery, the solenoid, the main fuse for battery power coming into the switch, and then we've looked at the key switch, we've looked at the PTO switch, 
the reverse relay and reverse switch. There's our PTO clutch. Indicator is an hour meter and voltage sensor and headlights. We haven't looked at taillights. We have not seen the fuel sensor or the brake interlock or those seat switches yet. So let's take a look at the rest of those guys. This switch, which had been bypassed on my tractor when I got it, this switch is the interlock switch, which has two sets of contacts on it. There's a normally open and a normally closed side of this switch, so it does two different things. One side of the switch will turn on the indicator, the other side of the switch will allow you to pass into the PTO switch and then out to the starter solenoid to start the engine. So, this guy is normally uh, putting that hole right down there in that cross member so that when you engage the brake pedal it pushes that plunger down uh, and allows you to crank over the engine. So that's the what they were calling the interlock switch. Um, that harness that breaks off there comes down the frame this way and comes out underneath the seat pan right here and also removed from this tractor but normally be here would be two seat switches spring loaded underneath this plate so that wiring that we just saw coming out underneath the seat goes to the seat switches and there's two of them one is a normally open switch and one is a normally closed again more uh, safety precautions let's say you fall off the tractor and the deck is turning you want to make sure that the tractor just completely stops if you fall off of the seat so there's uh, yeah seat switches would be back here and then of course lighting would be underneath here and then there's the fuel level sensor which is back in there too under the fuel tank so part of this harness here runs all the way back here uh, yeah real hard to see but you have wiring running up to the indicators here or the uh, running up to the lights there and then uh, the fuel level sensor for the tank which we won't be able to see because it's under the pan um, is under there so that's uh, that's the basics we've got the fuel sensor all the indicators the reverse switch um, that's where things are typically where the problems are going to be or where the problems occur PTO switch connections and I'm talking about the physical connection itself not the internals of the switch this is actually one that's a good would be a good example so here's the start interlock portion of the PTO switch now if I can do this with two if I pull this off here see those connections they're pretty crusty and if we look those are looking a little corroded they're not terrible the connections at the switch are actually loose you see them flopping around so we're looking for loose connections corroded wires that sort of stuff in general we're looking for that uh, another place that this happens very, very commonly, uh, not only on this series of tractor, but on a lot of these, is the key switch connections here. Especially if they sit out for a while, that corrosion builds up behind the connectors. And I might be able to get this one to fail on camera, I'm not sure. Um, this one doesn't want to engage the starter solenoid all the time unless you jiggle that connector for the key switch.
I got nothing. Yep, I got absolutely nothing right now. So, I'm jiggle, I'll jiggle this connection back in here. Oh, look, here, I have connection now. So you can see this is the off position for the switch. That's the run position. In the run position we have low oil, low fuel, and amp. So what that's telling us is there's low fuel, there's no oil pressure or very low oil pressure, and we don't have enough battery voltage according to that voltage sensor. When we go to the next position, the next position in the switch turns off the light but keeps the run circuit active and goes to crank. Now you'll see those lights go off, which is correct, and these come on. So you have your reverse indicator, your disengage PTO, and your depressed left pedal. Now, right now, the starter solenoid is working, so we would be cranking the engine right now. So these indicators here are pretty much telling you you need to do a certain thing, right? So if I turn on the PTO switch, okay, now the PTO is on. All the same indicators come on, but I'm not getting any action at the starter solenoid anymore because the switch is still on. So we turn the switch off and we get action down at the solenoid again. So Basically, the way this, this works is there's, you know, two sets of indicators. There's the cranking indicators and the run circuit indicators. And I'll go into more detail uh, as to why they have it set up like that. Those are the basics of what components are involved, where they're located, and, um, kind of an idea of what what you should see when you move the key around. We'll go into the starting circuit first since the start circuit involves some some interlock switches in general and um, then we'll move from the cranking system to the running system and then we'll take a look at the more problematic and the most complex one which is the PTO system. And that's the one that people have a lot of problems with on these, really. A lot of people will have the problem where if you engage this PTO switch here, a lot of people will have problems with it only engaging the PTO when it's held in the up position. And when it falls back to the center, the relays don't latch and hold the PTO live. So we'll get to that after we uh, look at more detail on the crank engine crank and engine run circuits.